Hi, good morning everyone. This is Buddy Hoskinson from the Department of Aging and Independent Living. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, we are very appreciative of Penny Ryle this morning to talk to us about private pay options. Uh, I know that when we sent out this request uh, or this invitation, we uh, had said originally it was going to be uh, Jill Collins, but Jill had an, a family emergency, so uh, Amanda Stokes down at Penny Ryle has agreed to step in and help us out this morning. So I'm going to turn it over uh, to Amanda. Amanda, thanks for helping us out. Amanda, we don't hear you. Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Modern technology at its best. Technical difficulties. Sorry. That's all right. Good morning. I just want to take a few minutes and do a brief overview of our private pay home delivered meals option for clients who are on our waiting list for services. Um, one reason that this option is so important for us to be able to offer is because of our current situation. We serve approximately 400 individuals with home delivered meals. However, with budget limitations and cuts, we know that number is going to decrease in the number of clients we serve. We also currently have about 285 individuals on the waiting list who have requested home delivered meals, and that number is just going to continue to increase. We want to make sure we have multiple options to give people in order to try to access the services that they need. So our current process is when an individual calls in to our Aging and Disability Resource Center, they are screened using the Level 1 screening tool and also the priority rating. Currently, our ADRC staff do an excellent job of providing education during that call as well. A lot of individuals do not understand that screening process and especially the priority rating. It's very confusing for them that a score is assigned. Um, a lot of people will call, we'll go through the process with them, try to explain to them about placing them on the waiting list. And within a month or two, we get a follow-up phone call from them a lot of times where they're upset because they've requested the service, why hasn't it started yet? So for our ADRC staff, they try really hard to do a good overall education summary for that individual when they call in to not only explain what information we need, but how that process works and that their spot on the waiting list may change at any time because we have calls every day where individuals are added to that waiting list and it's based on that score. Now with that process, we also give them information about private pay options. Not only the private pay meals that are available in our area, but other resources like Mom's Meals and other companies where they can have those meals delivered to them through dropship. With our private pay option, it is through our nutrition provider, and those meals are cooked fresh and hot daily in each senior center in those counties. So it's not a frozen meal or a shelf-stable meal coming to them. It's a hot meal delivered to their door each day. Um, now with that as well, for a lot of individuals, it's not just the meal coming in, but it's also knowing that somebody will be coming by daily, Monday through Friday, to check on them when they do that. Um, one of our success stories that I shared with Dale just the other day was um, a client who had been on meals. She had received meals for three days. On the fourth day, the driver couldn't find her or get her to come to the door. He called the family and they came over and checked on her and found her on the floor and ended up having to take her to the hospital. Um, the family lived in another county, so had the driver not been scheduled to go by that day and deliver her meal, we're uncertain of how long she would have laid there on the floor before any of the family would have come by to check on her. So that's an added bonus to that meal service as well. It's a lot about that daily contact as well for those individuals. Um, now, with our private pay meals, originally it started in just one county. It started here in Christian County in Hopkinsville. And then over time, the provider expanded it to all nine counties. Um, 
done to ensure that we were giving that option to everyone. With that private pay option, there's a lot of flexibility. Some clients or individuals that call in on the waiting list will tell us, well, I'm interested, but I cannot financially afford to do five days a week. So they have the option to take change things from one up to five days a week for that private pay home delivered meal. And then at the end of the month, they'll receive an invoice giving them the total money that they owe for those meals. Now, it's not just that we set up those arrangements with that individual. It may be a caregiver. It may be a community. Uh, we've had some private organizations who wanted to sponsor an individual for a meal. We've also had churches and Sunday school classes who wanted to be able to sponsor a particular individual from their church to get that home delivered meal while they're on the waiting list. Another need that the private pay meals can help to address is if you have someone who calls in and they only need meals for a very short time frame during a recovery, um, such as recovery from surgery. We've had calls where people say, I need meals for one week, one week only during my recovery process and I have to be able to do those on my own again. So with that private pay option, we do have that flexibility in being able to sign somebody up on private pay for one week that need for them. Um, now, with our nutrition provider, um, it's knowledgeable for our individuals in our area right now. A lot of them have heard about the meals they can get through home care or Title III, but they're starting to hear more and more about the private pay meals. So at times, we will have individuals who do not contact our ADRC, but they contact our senior centers directly to try to set up private pay arrangements for meals. Currently, our nutrition provider will take down that information, but they also have the individual to contact the ADRC. We do our very best to make sure that any of those individuals who are privately paying for services are also on the waiting list for the home care or the Title III home delivered meals. It's very rare that we have an individual who will decide to private pay long term. Most of them express that financially it's something they can only do for a limited time and that they're interested in that home care or Title III. So we try our best to ensure that those individuals are on that waiting list while they're privately. Now, for us, this has been a learning experience. We've done um, a lot of data collection. We've tried to see what works and what doesn't work. Um, also, when we did our recent needs assessment in fiscal year 18, we added a new question that we had never asked before. And that question was, if you were to be placed on a waiting list for services, would you be interested in private pay services until the funded service you need is available? Now, we sent out over 1,200 surveys. We received back over 600 of those completed. And approximately 15% of the individuals who completed that needs assessment survey said, yes, they would be interested in private pay services. An additional 38% said maybe they would be interested and would want more information about that. So for us, we are taking that information along with what we've learned from private pay home delivered meals, and we're trying to refine that process and make sure that we're really meeting the needs of those individuals that we serve in our communities. Also, we're hoping to use a lot of this information and the learning process from it to possibly develop a business model for private pay homemaking in the future because that waiting list also continues to grow and we're not able to sufficiently meet that need in our area with home care and Title III homemaking alone. So again, it's been a learning process. A lot of it is about educating those individuals when they first call in and a good open line of communication with our staff and our nutrition provider to make sure that we have fluid communication with each other so that everybody is aware of who is on the waiting list and who is receiving those private I hope this information has been useful. Are there any questions? Amanda, this is Buddy. I just want to say thank you for taking the time. But the, the needs assessment survey that, that you did, does that help you all go back to maybe sponsors and to churches 
if you know that you have a 15 or a 38 percent need of potential uh, individuals who are wanting to do that does that help you all kind of talk to the community about maybe helping sponsor some of those private pays I think it does and we've also been used that information that we put out there on our website with that needs assessment and also provided that information to our advisory council as well as the pad board of directors to try to help everyone have a better understanding of it's not just the state and federal funded services that can meet the needs. There are other options and making sure that people understand and are aware of that. And we have some really great sponsors, uh, such as one of our Rotary Clubs. They've been really great in one particular county to sponsor several individuals um, with private pay meals. So that information is very useful. Thank you. Are there other questions? Amanda, this is Vicki at Five Count. Do you just make the referral to the provider and then they deal with the meal, the uh, the invoicing, collection of funds, et cetera? Yes, our provider does do that. Um, we have set up some things in SAMS in order to be able to do invoicing and things directly in SAMS, but our provider had a different system, and so they've opted not to use the SAMS invoicing process for that but they have a separate system that they use and they handle that direct communication and that monthly invoicing and fee collection. Amanda, this is Sue. How do, how do you handle um, somebody that's on private pay, but say the Rotary Club is sponsoring a certain number of meals? Do, does the Rotary Club pay the provider or do they pay you? Or is it just a flat amount of money? That particular county, it's my understanding that they have a monthly amount that they're willing to pay. Okay. So we have worked it out so that that amount will cover a specific number of individuals for that month. Okay. Um, so that they're not necessarily privately paying themselves and then they're switched over to the Rotary Club. The Rotary Club fully covers all their meals for that one month time frame. Okay, so the Rotary Club gets the bill then? Yes. The theoretically from? Right, they go ahead and give that amount to the senior center, that nutrition provider, monthly. Okay. Other questions? Okay, so what, what we'll do if there are no other questions, if, if you do have other questions, you can email me obviously here at Dell and we'll get those down to Penny Ryle. We're also going to, as this is being recorded, we'll put it on the YouTube channel and then put it out there so that if anybody missed in your, in your uh, areas that you wanna share it with, you're happy, uh, we're happy to let you do that. So we appreciate it. And if you have other good best practices that you wanna share, let us know so we can get scheduled for an Information Tuesday. If there's nothing else, I will say uh, have a great day, all right? All right, thank you. All right, take care.